Neuroblastoma is a type of cancer that most commonly affects children, especially those under the age of five. It originates from neural crest cells involved in the development of the sympathetic nervous system, which includes parts of the adrenal glands and nerve tissue along the spine. Neuroblastoma can occur anywhere in the body, but is most frequently found in and around the adrenal glands, which sit atop the kidneys and are part of the body's hormonal and stress response system. Characteristics, age, primarily affects young children with the majority of cases diagnosed by age five. Location, commonly arises in the adrenal glands, but can also develop in nerve tissue along the spine, chest, abdomen, or pelvis. Symptoms can vary widely depending on tumor location and may include abdominal pain, a palpable mass in the abdomen, weight loss, fatigue, fever, and hypertension. Tumors in the chest may cause breathing difficulties, while those near the spine can cause weakness or paralysis. Diagnosis imaging, ultrasound, CT scans, MRI, and MIBG, metaiodobenzyl guanidine scans are used to locate the primary tumor and any metastases. Biopsy, a tissue sample from the tumor is examined under a microscope to confirm the diagnosis and assess tumor characteristics. Bone marrow aspiration and biopsy, to check for spread to the bone marrow. Laboratory tests, urine catecholamines, VMA, and HVA are often elevated in neuroblastoma. Staging, neuroblastoma staging ranges from stage 1, localized, to stage 4, widespread metastasis, with stage 4S being a special category for infants under 1 year, with localized tumor, and limited spread that often spontaneously regresses. Treatment. Treatment depends on the tumor's stage, location, and the patient's age and general health, and may include surgery to remove the tumor when feasible. Chemotherapy, often used especially for high-risk or metastatic disease. Radiation therapy, used in some cases to shrink the tumor or treat metastases. High-dose chemotherapy and stem cell transplant for high-risk or recurrent neuroblastoma. Immunotherapy, including antibodies that target specific aspects of neuroblastoma cells to boost the immune system's response against the cancer. Prognosis, the prognosis varies significantly based on the age of the child, stage of the disease, and tumor biology. Younger children and those with lower stage disease generally have a better prognosis. Advances in treatment have improved outcomes even in high-risk neuroblastoma. High yield points. Neuroblastoma is a pediatric cancer originating from neural crest cells, most commonly affecting the adrenal glands. Symptoms and presentation can vary widely based on the tumor's location. Diagnosis involves imaging, biopsy, and laboratory tests for catecholamine metabolites. Treatment is tailored to the stage and characteristics of the tumor and may include surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, stem cell transplant, and immunotherapy. The prognosis is influenced by age, stage, and tumor biology, with ongoing research and treatment advances improving outcomes for many patients. Clinical case, neuroblastoma. Patient information, age, three-year-old female, medical history, generally healthy with normal developmental milestones, no significant family history of cancers. Presenting complaint. The parents bring their daughter to the pediatrician due to a noticeable abdominal swelling and complaints of intermittent abdominal pain over the past few weeks. They also report episodes of fever and a recent decrease in appetite. History of present illness. The abdominal swelling was first noticed about a month ago, with the child occasionally complaining that her tummy hurts. Initially thought to be related to constipation, but with no improvement with dietary changes. The child has also been more fatigued than usual, with occasional fevers at night. Physical examination. General, alert, well-appearing child, no acute distress. Vital signs, slightly elevated blood pressure for age, other vitals within normal ranges. Abdominal exam, palpable mass in the left upper quadrant, non-tender, firm, and not moving with respiration. Skin, no notable rashes or lesions, no significant lymphadenopathy noted. Diagnostic workup, ultrasound of the abdomen, reveals a solid mass near the left adrenal gland suggestive of neuroblastoma. CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, confirms the presence of a 5 centimeters mass consistent with neuroblastoma, no evidence of metastatic disease.
MIBG scan shows uptake in the primary tumor, no evidence of distant metastasis. Urinary catecholamines, elevated levels of homovanillic acid, HVA, and vanillomimandelic acid, VMA. Biopsy of the mass, histopathological examination confirms neuroblastoma. Assessment, a three-year-old female presenting with an abdominal mass, intermittent pain, and systemic symptoms diagnosed with localized neuroblastoma based on imaging, elevated urinary catecholamines, and biopsy. Management plan. 1. Surgical consultation for resection of the primary tumor. Complete surgical excision is attempted considering the localized nature of the tumor. 2. Oncology referral for postoperative evaluation and determination of the need for adjuvant therapy based on final staging and risk stratification. 3. Supportive care. Manage symptoms and provide supportive care including pain management and nutritional support. 4. Follow-up. Regular follow-up visits for monitoring of blood pressure, growth, development, and any signs of recurrence. Scheduled imaging and urine catecholamine testing as part of surveillance. Outcome, the child undergoes successful surgical resection of the tumor with no immediate complications. Postoperative staging classifies the tumor as stage one, and given, given the complete resection and favorable histopathology, observation is chosen over chemotherapy. Follow-up over the next year shows no evidence of recurrence, and the child continues to thrive. Discussion points. The importance of early detection and multidisciplinary management in neuroblastoma, which can significantly influence outcomes. The role of surgical resection in localized neuroblastoma and factors influencing the decision for adjuvant therapy. The need for careful long-term follow-up given the risk of late effects and recurrence even in localized disease treated surgically. VIPOMA is a rare type of neuroendocrine tumor that primarily originates in the pancreas, though it can occasionally arise from other parts of the neuroendocrine system. The name VIPOMA comes from the tumor's secretion of vasoactive intestinal peptide, VIIP, which leads to a distinctive set of symptoms known as WDHA syndrome, watery diarrhea, hypokalemia, and achlorhydria, or acidosis. Characteristics. Incidence, very rare, with an estimated incidence of about 1 in 10 million people per year. Location. Most commonly found in the pancreas, particularly in the tail of the pancreas. Secretion. VIPomas produce excessive amounts of VIP, leading to profound fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Symptoms, WDHA syndrome, watery diarrhea, profuse watery diarrhea is the hallmark symptom, often exceeding three liters per day, leading to dehydration. Hypokalemia, low potassium levels due to significant loss in the stool, which can cause muscle weakness, cramping, and fatigue. Achlorhydria acidosis, reduced stomach acid due to VIP effects, though this is less commonly observed. VIP levels, elevated levels of vasoactive intestinal peptide, VIP in the blood. Imaging studies, CT scan, MRI, and somatostatin receptor scintigraphy, OctreoScan, can help locate the tumor and assess for metastasis. Endoscopic ultrasound can be useful in identifying pancreatic tumors. Biopsy, histological examination of tumor tissue, obtained either surgically or via endoscopic ultrasound, confirms the diagnosis. Treatment, surgical resection, the preferred treatment for localized tumors, offering a chance for cure. Medical management for symptom control or in inoperable cases includes somatostatin analogs, e.g. octreotide, to inhibit VIP secretion and fluid and electrolyte replacement. Chemotherapy and targeted therapy, considered for advanced or metastatic disease, though the response rates vary. Radiofrequency ablation and embolization, techniques used for managing liver metastases. Prognosis. The prognosis for VIPoma patients can vary widely, depending heavily on the stage at diagnosis and the tumor's resectability. Surgical resection of localized tumors can be curative, while metastatic disease is challenging to treat and associated with a poorer prognosis. High yield points, VIPoma is a rare neuroendocrine tumor characterized by the excessive production of vasoactive intestinal peptide, VIP, leading to severe watery diarrhea and electrolyte disturbances. The diagnosis involves measuring elevated VIP levels in the blood and localizing the tumor through advanced imaging techniques. Treatment primarily involves surgical resection with medical management aimed at symptom control and management of metastatic disease as needed.
Clinical Case VI POMA. Patient information, age, 52-year-old female, occupation accountant, medical history, hypertension managed with medication, no other significant medical or surgical history. Presenting complaint, the patient presents to the gastroenterology clinic with a six-month history of severe watery diarrhea and recent unexplained weight loss. History of present illness, the patient reports experiencing six to eight episodes of profuse watery diarrhea daily, not associated with food intake and persisting overnight. She mentions significant weight loss of about 15 pounds over the last six months, despite no changes in diet. She also complains of generalized weakness and episodes of muscle cramping. Physical examination, general, appears dehydrated and fatigued. Vital signs, blood pressure 110, 70 millimeter grads, heart rate 98 BPM, mild orthostatic hypotension noted. Abdominal exam, soft, non-distended, no palpable masses, normal bowel sounds, skin, dry mucous membranes, diagnostic workup, blood tests, reveal hypokalemia and mild metabolic acidosis. Stool studies, no pathogens identified. Stool osmotic gap indicates secretory diarrhea. VIP levels significantly elevated. CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis shows a three centimeters mass in the tail of the pancreas. Endoscopic ultrasound with fine needle aspiration confirms a neuroendocrine tumor consistent with VI POMA. Assessment, a 52-year-old female with a history of severe watery diarrhea, weight loss, hypokalemia, and metabolic acidosis. Elevated VIP levels and imaging consistent with a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor lead to a diagnosis of vip -oma. Management plan. 1. Fluid and electrolyte replacement. Immediate initiation to correct dehydration, hypokalemia, and acidosis. 2. Octreotide therapy. Start somatostatin analog to reduce VIP secretion and control diarrhea. 3. Surgical consultation. For the resection of the pancreatic tumor, considering it appears localized based on imaging. 4. Nutritional support to address weight loss and nutritional deficiencies resulting from prolonged diarrhea. 5. Multidisciplinary team approach, including gastroenterology, endocrinology, oncology, and surgery for comprehensive management. Outcome. The patient responds well to octreotide with a significant reduction in diarrhea frequency. She undergoes successful laparoscopic resection of the pancreatic tumor. Postoperatively, her diarrhea resolves and her electrolyte imbalances normalize. Follow-up imaging and VIP levels show no evidence of residual disease. Discussion points. The importance of considering VIP OMA in patients with chronic watery diarrhea not explained by common gastrointestinal disorders, especially when accompanied by metabolic abnormalities. The role of somatostatin analogs in managing symptoms and preparing for surgery the potential for curative treatment with surgical resection in localized vip -oma, highlighting the importance of a multidisciplinary approach in the management of rare neuroendocrine tumors. Rhabdomyosarcoma, RMS, is a malignant tumor of striated muscle and is the most common soft tissue sarcoma in children and adolescents. Despite its origin in muscle tissue, RMS can arise in almost any part of the body, often in sites where striated muscle is scarce, such as the head and neck region, genitourinary tract, and extremities. Types of rhabdomyosarcoma. 1. Embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma, the most common subtype, typically affecting children under 10 years old. It often occurs in the head and neck region, genitourinary tract, and retroperitoneum. 2. Alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma, more common in adolescents and young adults, this subtype is often found in the extremities, chest, and abdomen. It tends to have a more aggressive course and a higher propensity for metastasis. 3. Pleomorphic rhabdomyosarcoma. This is a rare subtype typically seen in adults, characterized by a variety of cell shapes and sizes. Symptoms. Symptoms of RMS vary widely depending on the tumor's location but may include a noticeable lump or swelling, pain or soreness, bulging of the eye or a drooping eyelid if located in the orbit, urinary or bowel problems for tumors in the genitourinary tract, nasal congestion or sinusitis-like symptoms for head and neck locations. Diagnosis, imaging, MRI and CT scans are used to define the extent of the disease and guide biopsy. Biopsy, 
a tissue sample from the tumor is necessary for a definitive diagnosis, utilizing histopathological examination and specialized tests such as immunohistochemistry. Staging investigations may include bone scans, PET scans, and bone marrow biopsies to assess for metastatic disease. Treatment. Treatment is multimodal and may involve a combination of surgery to remove the tumor, aiming for clear margins while preserving function. Chemotherapy, a cornerstone of RMS treatment, often used before surgery to shrink the tumor and postoperatively to eliminate any residual disease. Radiation therapy, used for certain cases, especially when surgical margins are not clear or in more aggressive subtypes like alveolar RMS. Prognosis. The prognosis for RMS varies based on the tumor's subtype, size, location, and presence of metastasis at diagnosis, as well as the patient's age and response to treatment. Generally, localized and completely resected tumors have a better prognosis. High yield points. RMS is a malignant tumor of striated muscle and the most common soft tissue sarcoma in children. Symptoms and signs of RMS depend on the tumor's location. Diagnosis involves imaging studies, biopsy, and often staging investigations to check for metastasis. Treatment typically includes a combination of surgery, chemotherapy, and possibly radiation therapy, tailored to the individual patient based on the specifics of their disease. The prognosis can vary widely, but is generally better for younger patients with localized disease that can be completely resected. Clinical case, rhabdomyosarcoma. Patient information. Age, a seven-year-old male. Medical history, generally healthy, up-to-date with vaccinations. No significant family history of cancer. Presenting complaint. The parents bring their child to the pediatrician due to a rapidly growing mass on his left thigh, which they first noticed two weeks ago. The child complains of pain and tenderness around the mass. History of present illness. The mass was initially thought to be a bruise from playing, but it has grown noticeably over two weeks, becoming more painful and causing a limp. No fever, weight loss, or night sweats reported. Had physical examination. General. Well appearing in mild distress due to pain. Vital signs. Within normal limits for age. Local exam. Uh, a firm, fixed 5 centimeters mass on the medial aspect of the left thigh, tender to palpation, with overlying skin appearing normal. Diagnostic workup, MRI of the thigh, reveals a 5 centimeter enhancing soft tissue mass within the muscle layers of the thigh, suggestive of a sarcoma. Biopsy, percutaneous core needle biopsy of the mass shows malignant round cells with striation consistent with rhabdomyosarcoma. Staging studies, CT chest, abdomen, and pelvis, along with a bone scan and bone marrow biopsy, show no evidence of metastatic disease. Hesher assessment. A seven-year-old male presenting with a rapidly growing, painful mass on the thigh. Imaging and biopsy findings are consistent with localized rhabdomyosarcoma. Management plan. One, referral to pediatric oncology and surgery for multidisciplinary evaluation and treatment planning. Two, chemotherapy. Neoadjuvant chemotherapy to reduce tumor size and facilitate surgical resection. Three, surgical resection. Plan following chemotherapy aiming for complete removal of the tumor with clear margins. Four, radiation therapy, considered postoperatively based on final surgical and pathological findings. Five, rehabilitation, post-treatment physiotherapy and support for functional recovery of the affected limb. Six, long-term follow-up, regular monitoring for recurrence and assessment of late effects of treatment. Outcome. After neoadjuvant chemotherapy, the tumor size reduced significantly, allowing for limb-sparing surgical resection. The child underwent post-operative radiation therapy. Follow-up over the next two years showed no evidence of recurrence, and he continued to participate in physical therapy for functional improvement of the limb. Discussion points. The importance of early recognition and referral are for suspected soft tissue sarcomas in children. The role of a multidisciplinary team in the management of rhabdomyosarcoma, including pediatric oncologists, surgeons, radiologists, pathologists, and physiotherapists. The need for individualized treatment plans based on tumor characteristics, response to therapy, and preservation of function. 
the critical role of long-term follow-up in detecting recurrence and managing late effects of treatment. Nephroblastoma, more commonly known as Wilms tumor, is a type of kidney cancer that primarily affects children, usually before the age of five. It is the most common type of renal cancer in children and tends to be highly treatable and curable, especially when detected early. Characteristics, origins, thought to arise from immature kidney cells that typically develop into normal kidney tissue but instead form a tumor. Location, can occur in one or both kidneys, but most cases involve only one kidney, unilateral. Symptoms, abdominal swelling or mass, the most common sign, often noticed accidentally by a parent or caregiver. Abdominal pain, may or may not be present, can be intermittent. Hematuria, blood in the urine, although less common. Hypertension, high blood pressure due to the tumor's effect on kidney function. Fever, loss of appetite, and weight loss, nonspecific symptoms that can also be associated with the tumor. Diagnosis, imaging. Ultrasound is often the first diagnostic step when a kidney tumor is suspected, followed by more detailed imaging with CT or MRI to characterize the tumor and assess for metastasis. Biopsy. A tissue sample may be obtained to confirm the diagnosis, though in some cases, surgery to remove the tumor may be performed without a prior biopsy. Laboratory tests. Urinalysis to check for blood in the urine, complete blood count, and kidney function tests. Treatment. Treatment generally involves a combination of surgery, chemotherapy, and in some cases, radiation therapy, depending on the stage of the tumor and whether it has spread. One surgery. The primary treatment for Wilms tumor, usually involving the removal of the affected kidney, nephrectomy, and possibly surrounding tissue. Two, chemotherapy, used in most cases to shrink the tumor before surgery or to treat any remaining cancer cells post-surgery. Three, radiation therapy may be used for more advanced cases or when the tumor has spread beyond the kidney. Prognosis. The prognosis for Wilms tumor is generally very good with high cure rates, especially when the disease is localized to the kidney. The survival rate can exceed 90% with appropriate treatment. Prognosis can vary based on the stage of the disease at diagnosis, the tumor's response to therapy, and specific histological features of the tumor. High yield points. Wilms tumor is a pediatric renal cancer with high treatability and cure rates when detected early. It presents most commonly as an asymptomatic abdominal mass with or without other nonspecific symptoms. Diagnosis is primarily based on imaging studies with surgery playing a key role in both diagnosis and treatment. Treatment typically involves a multimodal approach with surgery, chemotherapy, and sometimes radiation therapy. Regular follow-up is crucial to monitor for recurrence and manage any long-term effects of treatment. Clinical case, nephroblastoma, Wilms tumor. Patient information, age, three-year-old female, medical history, unremarkable, family history, non-contributory. Presenting complaint, the parents bring their daughter to the pediatrician after noticing a swelling in her abdomen, which seemed to appear suddenly. They report no history of trauma or injury. History of present illness. The swelling was first noticed two weeks ago. The child has been otherwise asymptomatic with no complaints of pain, no changes in urinary habits, no fever, and no significant changes in appetite or activity level. Physical examination. General, active and playful, no acute distress. Vital signs, within normal limits for age. Abdominal exam, a palpable non-tender mass on the right side of the abdomen. The mass is firm and does not cross the midline. Diagnostic workup, ultrasound of the abdomen, reveals a large solid mass arising from the right kidney. CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis confirms a seven centimeters mass in the right kidney with characteristics suggestive of Wilms tumor no evidence of metastatic disease. Laboratory tests, CBC, electrolytes, renal function, and urinalysis are within normal limits. No hematuria detected. Assessment, a three-year-old female presenting with an asymptomatic abdominal mass with imaging studies consistent with Wilms tumor originating from the right kidney. Management plan, one pediatric oncology referral, immediate referral for oncologic assessment and management. 
Two, preoperative chemotherapy. Initiate neoadjuvant chemotherapy as per standardized Wilms tumor protocol to reduce tumor size and facilitate surgical resection. Three, surgery. Planning for nephrectomy following chemotherapy, aiming for complete removal of the tumor. Four, postoperative care. Uh, continued chemotherapy and close monitoring for potential complications or recurrence. Five, long-term follow-up, regular follow-up appointments for renal function assessment, monitoring for late effects of treatment, and surveillance for recurrence. Outcome, the child responds well to preoperative chemotherapy with a significant reduction in tumor size. She undergoes a successful nephrectomy with complete resection of the tumor. Postoperative pathology confirms the diagnosis of Wilms tumor, stage one. The patient completes the postoperative chemotherapy protocol with no significant complications. Follow-up over the next five years shows no evidence of recurrence, and the patient maintains good renal function with compensatory hypertrophy of the remaining kidney. Discussion points. The importance of early detection and intervention in Wilms tumor to optimize outcomes. The role of multimodal treatment, including chemotherapy and surgery, in the management of Wilms tumor. The need for comprehensive long-term follow-up to monitor for recurrence, assess renal function, and manage any late effects of treatment. Hodgkin's lymphoma, also known as Hodgkin lymphoma, is a type of lymphatic cancer that originates in the lymphatic system, part of the body's immune defense. It is characterized by the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells, which are large, abnormal lymphocytes that can be identified under a microscope. Characteristics, age groups. It has a bimodal distribution, primarily affecting young adults, ages 15 to 35, and then individuals over 55. Symptoms, painless swelling of lymph nodes, often in the neck, armpits, or groin. Persistent fatigue, fever and chills, night sweats, unexplained weight loss, itchy skin, coughing, trouble breathing, or chest pain if lymph nodes in the chest are affected. Diagnosis, physical examination, checking for swollen lymph nodes, spleen, and liver. Imaging tests, CT, PET, and MRI scans can help determine the spread and staging of the disease. Biopsy, a lymph node biopsy, specifically looking for the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells, is essential for a definitive diagnosis. Bone marrow biopsy, to check if the disease has spread to the bone marrow. Staging. Hodgkin's lymphoma is staged from I to 4E based on the number of lymph nodes involved, whether the lymphoma is on one or both sides of the diaphragm, and whether it has spread to other parts of the body. Treatment. Treatment depends on the stage and may include chemotherapy, the primary treatment for most stages of Hodgkin's lymphoma, radiation therapy, often used in combination with chemotherapy, especially for early-stage Hodgkin's lymphoma or to target specific areas. Targeted therapy and immunotherapy for cases that are recurrent or do not respond to initial treatments. Stem cell transplant considered for relapsed or refractory Hodgkin's lymphoma. TASH prognosis. The prognosis for Hodgkin's lymphoma is generally very good, especially if diagnosed and treated early. Advances in treatment have led to high cure rates with long-term remission and survival rates exceeding 80% in many cases. High yield points. Hodgkin's lymphoma is characterized by the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells in the lymph nodes. Common symptoms include painless lymph node enlargement, fever, night sweats, and weight loss. Diagnosis involves physical exams, imaging, lymph node biopsy, and sometimes bone marrow biopsy. Treatment typically includes chemotherapy and radiation therapy with excellent prognosis and high cure rates in early stages. Regular follow-up is essential to monitor for potential late effects of treatment and recurrence. Hat, clinical case, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Patient information, age, 24-year-old male, occupation, graduate student, medical history, no significant medical history. Presenting complaint, the patient presents with a painless swelling in the neck noticed over the last two months, which has progressively enlarged. He also reports experiencing night sweats and unexplained weight loss of about 10 pounds during the same period. History of present illness, the swelling is not associated with pain or any recent infections. The patient initially thought it might be related to stress from school. 
However, the persistent night sweats and weight loss prompted him to seek medical advice. Physical examination, general, appears well-nourished but slightly pale. Vital signs, within normal limits, no fever at the time of examination. Head and neck, palpable, non-tender, rubbery lymph nodes in the cervical region, largest approximately 3 centimeters in diameter, no palpable lymphadenopathy in the axillary or inguinal regions. Skin, no rashes or itchiness noted. Cardiopulmonary exam, normal heart sounds, clear lungs. Diagnostic workup, CBC, mild anemia, other parameters within normal limits. ESR and LDH, elevated, indicating possible inflammation or lymphoma. Imaging, chest x-ray is clear. CT scan of the neck, chest, abdomen, and pelvis reveals enlarged cervical and mediastinal lymph nodes. Biopsy. Excisional biopsy of a cervical lymph node shows the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells, confirming the diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Bone marrow biopsy, negative for lymphomatous involvement. Assessment, a 24-year-old male with cervical lymphadenopathy, night sweats, and unexplained weight loss diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma based on the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells in lymph node biopsy. Shush, management plan, one, staging and further evaluation. The patient is classified as having stage 2 Hodgkin's lymphoma based on imaging and biopsy results. 2. Chemotherapy. The patient is referred to an oncologist and starts ABVD chemotherapy, adriamycin, bleomycin, vinblastine, dacarbazine. 3. Radiation therapy. Uh, considered post-chemotherapy for bulky disease or residual lymphadenopathy. 4. Supportive care. Nutritional support, management of chemotherapy side effects, and psychological support. 5. Follow-up. Regular monitoring during treatment with imaging and lab tests to assess response to therapy and adjust treatment as necessary. Long-term follow-up to monitor for recurrence and manage late effects of treatment. Outcome. The patient completes six cycles of ABVD chemotherapy with a significant reduction in lymph node size and resolution of B symptoms, night sweats, weight loss. Post-treatment PET scan shows no evidence of active disease. The patient enters remission and continues regular follow-up visits. Discussion points. The importance of recognizing the classic symptoms and signs of Hodgkin's lymphoma leading to early diagnosis and treatment. The role of excisional lymph node biopsy in confirming the diagnosis and the significance of Reed-Sternberg cells. The effectiveness of ABD chemotherapy regimen in treating Hodgkin's lymphoma and the considerations for using radiation therapy. The need for comprehensive supportive care and long-term follow-up to manage side effects, monitor for recurrence, and address late effects of treatment.